Today we're going to be looking at a channel called Hacksmith Industries. Specifically this heavily requested one right here. 4000 degrees plasma proto lightsaber build with a retractable blade. This sounds awesome. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Tyler Fulce. I'm a nuclear engineer with a little over 10 years of experience in the commercial nuclear power industry. From engineering to operations to emergency response. I don't claim to know everything there is nuclear, but I can certainly share some knowledge. Let's check it out. A real retractable plasma-based lightsaber. That's the insane. The pinnacle of sci-fi tech. And probably one of the most sought after fictional technologies ever. As you know, we've been developing different lightsabers, or like they're called in Star Wars lore, proto-sabers for the past four years now. From some initial power supply tests that got the fire <laughs> department called on us, wow. to version one using nitinol wire, to version two using a tungsten titanium blade hybrid, Version 2.1, so we could have a real-life lightsaber duel, <laughs> which, fire by the suits. way, was extremely unsafe. To finally, our Kylo Ren-style lightsaber, complete with a 3D-printed titanium hilt. <laughs> See, the idea of a cross guard that's glowing on that thing is insane. A protosaber, of course, is a lightsaber with an external power pack. Since, you know, we don't exactly have D-sized batteries capable of putting out more power than a nuclear power plant. <laughs> which, by the way... <laughs> If only, right? Uh, I think the smallest we've got in nuclear reactors to be is ones that could fit in a semi-truck that are on the order of 1 to 20 megawatts. It's a lot smaller than building in a full-size facility, but I think that's about as small as, as we've gotten them thus far. Is what you'd need for a lightsaber to function like it does in the movies. <laughs> yeah. On the order of... Uh, now, I don't know, would you really need a gigawatt's worth of power in order to for it to function in the movies, or is a lot of that just the Jedi being that crazy? But then again, Star Wars weapon technology is insane. Like, you would need many, many trillions of nuclear power plants to generate enough energy to be anything at all comparable to the Death Star. And even then, it, we're talking trillions and trillions and trillions of them. <laughs> Now, in my opinion, what we've made so far are some of the closest representations of lightsabers using real-life technologies. They look like a lightsaber. They sound like a lightsaber. Cool. And at temperatures of over 3,000 degrees, they actually cut stuff, like a lightsaber. But as you know, the internet is not easily pleased. Those are just red-hot sticks. That's just a red-hot piece of metal. That's not <laughs> even a real lightsaber. Your lightsaber sucks, and you should feel bad, too. Doesn't Luckily, use real kyber crystals. Skin, since I've read over half a million comments on my YouTube channel. That's equivalent wow. to like 200 full length novels, by the way. So, despite the troll's best wishes, we have not given up. Which is good, since you know, you could count on one hand the amount of people in this world actually working on lightsabers. There were four of them. <laughs> anyway, how the heck do you make a plasma based lightsaber? Well, best theories say that plasma is held in a beam by a magnetic field, which scientifically checks out. You see, the issue is pretty... If you're going to control it, yes. I mean, it's... Otherwise, plasma exists in places like the sun, but I think I know what he's getting at. Using <laughs> a strong enough electromagnetic field to contain a blade? Well, the lightsaber would quite literally have to be built inside of a box coated in electromagnets, which turns it into kind of a useless science project. Woo, I made a lightsaber. <laughs> Luckily, we've come up with an alternate solution to control the flow of plasma which allows us to make a retractable blade and even change its color. We're gonna be using laminar flow. You know, that cool thing where liquids flow smoothly? Yes. We actually teased this project months ago on our Instagram, which maybe we share too soon, since it's resulted in almost all new comments being, where is the lightsaber? <laughs> I mean, come on guys, it might not be brain surgery, but building a lightsaber is basically rocket science. It's taken us quite a few months to get just right, and we also had to upgrade our equipment in the shop to even be able to manufacture it. Like now there is an idea, using lightsabers surgically, I mean I guess they would be self-cauterizing if they're that high of a temperature. I guess that would explain why a lot of lightsaber injuries, like when Luke gets his hand cut off, he doesn't bleed out just because it's that hot. New Tormach 1100 MX CNC machine, also complete with the fourth axis. Bogdan's been pretty excited to try it out. And since Star Wars was a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away, <laughs> it's only fitting that our first real plasma lightsaber is steampunk. I think it's Bogdan's turn what? to design that hill. Steampunk is a subset of science fiction which incorporates antique design aesthetics from the 19th Steam century. Steam and plasma, huh? Technologies. When I was scrolling through to get some design inspirations for the lightsaber, I came across this picture and it instantly caught my attention. 
I think Steampunk would be great for this design. Or is that just the look of it? Gauges, valves, copper tubing, and regulators, which are gonna look perfect in this installation. Here's the final design of our lightsaber hilt. It incorporates lots of materials, including brass, copper, stainless, glass, and even leather to give it that true steampunk look. I mean, if you think about it, nuclear is technically steampunk since it kind of, it just produces steam. It's no different than coal or natural gas in that regard. Granted, it's just cleaner and it uses a different heat source. Yeah. Uranium is just a different type of hot rocks. We even decided to add the kyber crystal heating chamber using some EL wire in a neon kyber bulb to make it look really chamber. cool and dark. The copper pipes that carry our flammable gases are nice and visible, and the adjustment knobs are easily accessible. Thanks to our new Tormach machines, so does we are it now actually able to function like it would be much more intricate part? designs, such as this one. Huh. Let's make it real. Here we go. I got some serious machines. That's cool. It's the first time watching this channel. Still wondering if that thing's actually going to be functional or just part of the aesthetic. It looks cool. It's got spikes on that. Check that out. Okay, I'm starting to see it's that. This is gonna be so cool. God, that looks incredible. Hey, whoa, put some gloves on. Oh, sorry. Yes, safe. Making any smudges on a lightsaber. Right, safety first. Of the lightsaber, not you, apparently. That is incredible. I think you've outdone yourself on this one, Bogdan. Look at the detail in that. If that's not steampunk, I don't know what is. But the real question is, how are we gonna power this? Yes, that's really Even with that's all really of our it. new equipment and capabilities here at Hacksmith Industries, we're still kind of bound by the laws of thermodynamics. Which means pain, we're isn't still going to have to make this into a proto saber with a power pack separate from the hilt. Now we've made incredibly energy dense power packs before, but in order to get enough power for a plasma based lightsaber, we're going to have to use something with more energy dense fuel. In this case, LPG, compressed liquid propane gas, which can give us sure. 50 times more energy per kilogram than a LiPo. Now that's a pretty incredible difference. In case you're wondering what it is for uranium, it's over 700,000 megajoules per kilogram. Cool thing, you probably have this right at home. We're talking about normal propane that you use in your barbecue. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So how do we turn propane into a superheated beam of plasma? The answer lies- I wonder if this means Hank Hill could technically sell this since it is going to be propane and propane accessories. The most satisfying demonstrations of physics phenomena of fluids, laminar flow. Basically, we need a large array of laminar flow nozzles to create highly concentrated flow of gas to create a plasma beam. Lucky for us, we aren't the only ones who need this, and highly specialized gas nozzles like this can be found at a rather high price. If I would have this saw nozzle this. right here costs over $4,000, and it's used in the glass blowing industry. To achieve maximum temperature, we need complete combustion, which means in addition to this propane, we're actually going to be using oxygen as well. Sure. That doesn't sound dangerous, right? <laughs> I mean... Anyways, let's see. You're going to need a lot of propane to make something that big, but that's also an interesting thing. You've used the idea of a mushroom cloud because you can, with enough propane, it could create enough to make a mushroom cloud. It's not unique to nuclear weapons. That is a big misconception out there. I think the Fallout games get that particularly bad when you have these little teeny tiny um, mushroom clouds because it's nuclear. It's got to have a mushroom cloud, even if it's a small yield thing. But no, nah, you can you can make a mushroom cloud with enough propane. That tank's not going to do it, not by itself. But you get many, many thousands of them. Sure. Works. First, turn on the propane. Then we turn on the oxygen. Some safety glasses. You always got to put in the safety sparkle. glasses.
the flame saber now. <laughs> Star Wars soundtrack. So look at that. <laughs> is that not a lightsaber? This beam is flame really saber, cool. It's sure. actually burning at around 4,000 Fahrenheit, which means it's capable of cutting through a lot of stuff. Mm-hmm. Should we cut through some stuff? Whoa. So this is actually our old lightsaber blade made of titanium. There you go. And look at that. It's already white Creative hot. destruction at its finest. That is so bright. Jesus. Might need the welding mask. The really cool thing about doing a... You can make a Darth Vader welding mask. There's an idea. I've heard, I've never seen the original cuts, but the original lightsabers were white, apparently, in the 1977 version, so this is reasonably close. Aim like this is we can actually color it using salts. Ooh, okay. Let's start okay. with some boric acid. What color do you think it's going to turn the blade? Another use for boric acid. So I'm used to using boric acid as basically liquid control rods for your nuclear power plant and a pressurized water reactor because boron will stop neutrons and that it will absorb the neutrons and prevent them from hitting more uranium and causing more fissions lowering reactor power and you can apparently use it in lightsabers now that's cool could have some nuclear jedi your guesses Ooh, look at that next up we have calcium chloride Ooh. Orange saber. Look at that red orange. That almost hurts to look at. We have some strontium chloride. Woo! That is like a road flare. This actually hurts to look at. Look at that. Oh. Finally. I guess fitting that uh, strontium could be the dark side with red, because strontium 90 is, is a particularly nasty fission product. We have some sodium chloride, also known as salt. Woo, and That's look at too. that. We've got Ray's lightsaber right here. Is that not cool? So we're able to produce a blue lightsaber, a green lightsaber, a red lightsaber, an amber lightsaber, and even a yellow lightsaber. That's How cool. How awesome is that? I should probably turn this off though. What about a purple one? Gotta have Mace Windu's saber. That took a lot of fine tuning to get the blade to the right length. And turning it off wasn't the most elegant. Luckily, Bogdan's gonna be actually there making a circuit with two fancy valves, which means we'll actually be able to get a computer Just to control get the, right the flow length. of gas to allow That's for this cool. to ignite and retract with the press of a button. So, I'm gonna let Bogdan handle that. After 12 weeks of anticipation, we finally got our hands on proportional control valves. These will allow us to control exactly how much gas goes into the lightsaber and therefore make it extend and retract. Now, we just need to figure out how to control it. And to do that, I'll be making a custom printed circuit board. I'm gonna be using Altium Designer, as it's the industry standard for PCB design software, and it's super powerful. This is the printed circuit board that Charles designed. Did you say it was a crisis proportional software. control? Since both projects are using pneumatic valves that a jet and pack? auxiliary outputs, <laughs> we'll be able to use it for our lightsaber with some minor modifications. Oh, well, that's cool. This I'm just zooming great. in if for you want to view this PCB yourself, the design you software. Can use Viewer. One of the only machines we don't have in the shop is a PCB mill. But why would we get one of those when websites like JLC PCB will allow us to order high quality boards in a matter of days for just $2 for five boards? We need like 15,000 boards to make up the cost of one. Why would we wait for that? I well, that was quick. Let's start soldering. Here we go. That's a, that's a fun color for your board. I'm used to the standard uninteresting green or blue ones. <laughs> that's cool. Okay. To better understand how the lightsaber electronics work, check out our page on maker.io. We've got to build a steampunk power pack with these pieces. I'll let Chris handle that. Well, this all needs to be polished before I can start building. I'm going to let Dave handle that. <laughs> all the handoffs. Fine, I'll do it myself. Fun group of guys. 
each doing their own thing. I, I like this. Kind of reminds me of Mythbusters. I like how they go into the aesthetic of it just as much as the functionality of it. It's, you can tell they're very passionate about what they do, and I, I really enjoy watching that. This is, I could tell right away that this is an awesome channel. Yeah, give, give it that look, that weathered look with your steampunk tank. The dramatic reveal. Look at that. Oh, this is beautiful. We did it. The world's first retractable plasma Does it actually lightsaber. sound like that? Now, obviously, we're going to have an amazing test video for this. We've got tons of stuff set up behind us to really put this through its paces, including cutting through a steel door. That is so cool. Anyways, let me know if you want me to see the uh, their testing video, but that looks so cool. Just the, their pro I love watching their process and how they each had a different guy doing a different part of this thing. And man, this is... This is a lot cooler than what I was expecting. Thank you so much for the recommendations on this. And I found yet another use for boric acid too, which is awesome. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.